morning. Good morning. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in Christ and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the 22nd chapter of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out, and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 116, which begins on page 759 in the prayer book. We will read all verses of Psalm 116 in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. 
because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul. For the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on the bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. Then the crowd saw it, and they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Once you hear the story that was in the Matthew lesson that Sarah read for us this morning, you automatically, at least I do, go back and look at the previous healing miracles, because it's literally a cascading series that, in essence, ends with this. And then Matthew gets called into apostleship, and you realize that the one thing that is in this story that is not in the previous stories is the declaration of forgiveness of sin, the heartbeat, in fact, out of which all miracles arise. We don't know what was going on in the life of the man, but that was the thing that was most important to be said. But it opens a door for us to really think very carefully, I hope, about sin and the impact it has on human beings and how that causes us to relate to God. Because the blasphemy accusation has merit if you understand that Jesus was not the Son of God and therefore had no authority to forgive sin. But if you believe that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God, and therefore God is declaring through Jesus, notice, he doesn't say, I forgive sin. He says, your sins are forgiven. It's a declaration of fact. And all of a sudden, we begin to see Jesus in a really, in a very, very new way. That he is, in fact, God in the flesh. God's representative. 
You see, it's the declaration of sin, forgiveness of sin, is in fact the heart of what Christianity is really all about. A lot of the ethical teaching of Christianity can be found in sort of nuanced ways in other various religious traditions. But the heartbeat of what we know and believe and in which we rejoice is that God looks at us just like he looked at the paralytic man. He doesn't ask the hard questions about, well, let's see if you qualify for the answer or how well you were doing today. It's free and it's just a declaration. There's no, if you do this, then I will forgive. It's just bang, your sins are forgiven. And the healing miracle, as you have heard, of course, is really meant to serve as a ratification so that you may know that the Son of Man has on earth, it says forgiveness of sins. I say to you, in other words, this is the demonstration before your very eyes that what I'm declaring to this paralytic man is true. I really can do this. God has authorized me to be able to do this. It is the unique thing that sets both Jesus and Christianity apart. It's in some ways an answer to the story that was read in the Genesis lesson about Abraham and the call to sacrifice Isaac. I mean, Jesus becomes in that moment, this is God's lamb that has been provided. We will not be slain on Mount Moriah, nor will there be any need for that as a way to expiate or forgive the sins of other people. That system's over. God has provided a lamb, as it were, in Jesus Christ. That, for me, is the thing that just causes me to exhale. I mean, there is in all of us, is there not, this sort of effort to try to prove ourselves and prove our worth. And how well are we doing? Has everything to do with the accomplishments that we can check off? Even if it's you know, just the mundane things of a daily list, we feel better <laughs> when there are more checkboxes than when they're not. This says something very, very different. That in the sight of Almighty God, which matters more than anything else, our worth is not proven by our accomplishments. Our worth has been given to us in the redemption, the forgiveness of sin, and that we are, as Paul would say later, so united in him that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that becomes the place of freedom. Anything other than that actually becomes a place of uncertainty. Is God making a list and checking it twice? What's really happening in my life? And am I going to get me qualified somehow to be able to talk to God this morning without him going, Wait a minute. No, to all of that. My sins have been forgiven. Period. And that, that is the heart of what we know and understand. All through the Gospels, where the miracles happen, they're meant to be ratifications of who Jesus is and what it is that he has to say. Over the Gospel of John, Jesus says to the crowd, if you can't believe me for my words, at least believe me for my works' sake. And all through the history of the church, healing miracles are in fact meant to be ratifications and signs that what we declare and what God says about himself in the scripture is in fact true. It's meant to draw us to Christ and to turn to him in a new way and to discover even more deeply that we are the people who have been given by God's mercy the forgiveness of sin and the promise of eternal life. So this scripture for me says two things that are extraordinarily important. Number one, that God has given Jesus as God in the flesh the authority to forgive sin. That's the heart of who he is. That is what, by God's declaration, makes him Messiah, is that kind of authority. And that's the word that she used. He has authority to forgive sin. Secondly, 
Not only does he have the authority to do it, he does it. He gives it without merit, without qualification. Your sins are forgiven, period, end of story. And it is, in fact, a sheer act of grace for which we could never qualify. And yet, that's exactly what is given to us. That is for us, at least for me, the deepest place of security that I have. That's what causes all of the rest of life to fall into place from the perspective of that kind of forensic, interior, emotional, relational security that has been given to us in Christ Jesus. We are his, we are forgiven. So that really is the point of the story. That is the doctrine that is spoken of in the Collect that unites us to the apostles and prophets. Is that clear, unqualified declaration that we have been received and forgiven. But what can you say after that? Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in the course of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people will be form three, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. In the cycle of prayer today, we're praying for Justin Welby, Michael Curry, Gay Jennings, Gregory O. Brewer, John W. Howe, William H. Falwell, the Diocese of Colombo, Ceylon, and Sri Lanka, and their bishop is DeSantia Rodrigo, Gail Abbott, a a Helen Adams, Orlando Addison, Matt Ainsley, Christy Alday, Sonair Alexander, Lloyd Allen, the Bishop of Honduras, Roy Allison, Julie Altenbach, uh, Robert Anderson, Francisco de Salvia, primate in the church in Brazil, Monier Anise, the primate in the church of Jerusalem in the Middle East, Mary Ellen Appleton, and Herbert Arinatu. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all, for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. 
Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Thanksgiving and continued prayers for Tom Holden. Where's the troubles? Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will. And, and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. asked to bless this oil. So I will do this just before we start the great Thanksgiving. Dear friends, in Christ, in the beginning, the Spirit of God hovered over the creation, and throughout history, God has, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, empowered his people to serve him. As a sign of that gift, the priests and kings of Israel the oil and our Lord Jesus was himself anointed with the Holy Spirit at his baptism as the Christ, God's own Messiah. At baptism, Christians are likewise anointed by that same Spirit to empower them. In God's service, let us now set apart this oil to be the sign of that anointing. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose blessed Son was anointed by the Holy Spirit to be the Savior and servant of all, we pray you to consecrate this oil that those who are sealed with it may share in the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For our unleashing. It has been the custom of the church to attend to the sick in the name of the Lord Christ and to ask God's miracle of healing for those so afflicted, praying for them and anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. 
let us now set apart this oil to be the sign of that anointing and for healing. Let us pray. O Lord, Holy Father, giver of health and salvation, send your Holy Spirit to sanctify this oil, that as your holy apostle anointed many that were sick and healed them, so may those who in faith and repentance receive this holy unction be made whole. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, oil of consecration. The church teaches that all things in the creation are gifts of Almighty God, and that they should all be seen as special objects and used for good. From time to time, the church sets apart special objects to be used for a holy purpose in the worship and service of God, blessing and anointing those objects. Let us now set apart this oil to be the sign of sanctification for these things. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift you have given us in your love. We thank you for life itself and for the sacramental life that gives its fuller meaning. Blessed we pray you this oil that those things which are anointed with it may be set apart for your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection and the forgiveness of sins has opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He had given thanks to you. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We're calling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal people. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. 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 Let's bless the Lord. Praise be God.